so this time the exam was uh, my subject the questions were balanced there were one liners and uh, there were definitely the questions which are based on the diagnostic test so as as usual there is always one vitamin as usual there is some test that they always ask Yes, this time the questions on uh, the direct disorders like amino acid. Okay. But yes, the topics were most of the time most of the topics were doable. It fine. Okay, so let let's let's uh, see what other questions they have been asked. So first of all, was the order of draw? So guys, this may be something new for few of uh, you guys. So what is the order of draw, guys? Order of draw is always like you know it should be first is sterile. Right, then citrate blue or the, that is red, the most common one. Biochemistry citrate is for the PT, for example, heparin, EDTA that is in the pathology lab, and oxalate that is gray color that is for uh, your sugar estimation, right? Glucose estimation. Okay, so guys, we always take uh, this sequence you know, why to prevent the contamination, okay, prevent the contamination, right, from the previous uh, vial, right. So, for example, you know, if we take the EDTA first, right? So then there will be the spurious electrolyte results such as hyperkalemia, hypocalcemia, etc. Okay, and lo longer coagulation time. So that's why the for the PT, for example, we took initially that blue one, right? For the PT and uh, hematological parameters could be modified. This is the second point. Hematological parameters could be modified by the fluoride or oxalate. Okay, so that's why the fluoride and oxalate are taken. Okay, so remember this is the basic sequence that we should follow in the order from, right to prevent the contact prevent the spurious result that was a rothra's test but let's take this question first third question there were around 10 to 11 questions biochem if you have any option pardon me if uh, options are wrong please let me know correct options fine so not the correct of the structure of collagen so guys collagen structure uh, collagen is the protein which has triple helix secondary structure right it is a triple helix secondary structure and it has a sequence which has most common amino acid as a glycine that is almost 30 percent of the glycine then proline almost 11 percent and hydroxy almost 11 percent right but there is no phenyl alanine as the most abundant at least it is not this is actually the very big amino acid commonly helix because you know the bulkier amino acid will destabilize the triple helix taken though what happens the glycine the smallest amino acid by let's say one of the common tyrosine one of the common mutation is glycine replaced by tyrosine and that causes the deformed bones which can fracture right so that is like uh, the question this was a very easy uh, glycine x y repeats always talk about glycine x and y X is most commonly proline and Y is most proline. Hydroxy, lysine, and lysine are also common. And guys, glycine is the one amino acid which provides the flexibility to the protein structure. That is already flexibility to the collagen structure is provided by glycine. Why? Because it has no side chain. Occupy the space, all spaces. Now there was a question guys on uh, the diagnosis was also mentioned as a Barth syndrome patient with cardiomyopathy. Select have anything then you here. So guys in the Barth syndrome, the Barth syndrome that is also called uh, X-linked endocardial fibroelastosis, right? So in this disease, what happens? Uh, there is a defect in it that is called as PAZ, right? The gene that is present X chromosome, right? So this is a disease which is excellent affects the boys or males most commonly. And guys, in this disease, there is a disorder of you know cardiolipin synthesis. Now, guys, even if you don't know about Barth syndrome, this is the point that all that is most common lipid or phospholipid the heart, right? That is in the inner mitochondrial membranes. That is cardiolipin. Okay, cardiolipin is a phospholipid. Okay, and this is the most abundantly present in the inner mitochondrial membrane. Guys, inner mitochondrial membrane, this it is 
happened there and because of deficiency of cardiolipin so because this g is that gene codes for certain enzymes which helps in the synthesis of cardiolipin so that will lead to the weak uh, heart right especially because mitochondria is suffering so skeletal muscles heart or uh, affected here right guys so cardiolipin is a phospholipid with the two see the general structure of phospholipid is always like this that we have one fatty acid and that is most commonly linoleic acid okay fatty acid that is most common linoleic acid and then there is a phosphate and then some x group so guys this x group is one more phosphatidic acid this structure is repeated again so that is the diphosphatidyl glycerol right I am repeating the same structure again at the X position, same structure that I have drawn. So, guys, that is all about this point. Remember about cardiolipin, the most abundant. And this is antigenic lipid, right? This is the one which is antigenic lipid. And, guys, this is used in the VDRL test. Yeah. It is used in the VDRL, antigen of VDRL test. So, that is again the uh, old questions. Right, except not the Barth syndrome directly. They asked pre. I think this is a good question. But yes, that is cardiomyopathy. Okay, guys. So now next question: 15-year-old boy, known case of type 1 diabetes, goes test for the detection test for the ketone bodies. So, uh, as per the recall, the image was given, and the answer for this is atherosclerosis. It gives a purple ring with the nitroprusside. So, what is the other name of Rothera's test? Nitroprusside test. Okay. Salivanoff is used for fructose, right? Fructose urea. Benedicts can detect the reducing substances in the urine, including glucose and any other sugar and vitamins. And biuret test is for peptides, okay, or the proteins. Fine. So, these are the tests, right? Okay, the which were mentioned probably you can correct me if I am wrong, right? Because pardon me, these are all right. Fine. Now moving on to the next question. Guys, this is not xanthinuria, xanth uranic. Correct one. Here, please change it. Xanth uranic acid urea can indicate his answer is vitamin six step. Is, uh, Older question again B6 deficiency okay because tryptophan metabolism so during the tryptophan metabolism you know guys we need in certain steps we need uh, especially the enzyme that we will use the kin uraninase okay kin uraninase is an enzyme and this is B6 dependent and guys based on this enzyme we are getting ultimately niacin or that is NAD so if this enzyme or vitamin B6 is deficient then we get xanth uraninase so that is an indicator of vitamin. Okay. And we also call this test as a tryptophan test. What is the other name? Tryptophan load test. Okay, don't forget the name. And guys, B12 deficiency, not the answer. Niacin deficiency, the answer. B2 deficiency, we use a common test known as glutathione reductase test. And guys, if you remember, B1 is transketolase test. Okay, guys, for B6, we also have a test. The new test that is actually can be used, and that is called as erythrocyte, okay, erythrocyte transaminase, right? Erythrocyte transaminase test. So that uh, can be used in the basic diagnosis. Okay, okay. So vitamins are always important. There is always DNA template sequence was given. Okay, and the what is the sequence of RNA they asked? Yes, this question was actually very easy because there was only one option which had uracil, right? Okay, so like I'm, I'm not writing any other options here. This is the only option which contained uracil as U, right? RNA has U, so A doesn't bind with the T, but A bind with the U if we take the transcription from. So A will, you know, make the complementary base will be uracil. Yeah. That was an easy one. Just the point is what we have to remember is that 5 is to 3. It is given 5 prime to 3 prime. 
So just make the RNA that will be initially 3 prime to 5 prime. So we'll make the RNA in 3 to 5 direction. Okay. Then just place it uh, in the 5 to 3 direction. Like if I have to make this, this will be G, G, A, A like that. So that will be this is the 5 prime to 3 prime in the options that was given. Always remember. Okay, don't don't think that uh, don't mark it like this way 5 to 3. Got my point? Okay, so this was easy, uh, very easy. Now, guys, uh, moving to the next question, there was uh, one technique favorite of INICT that they always ask. But again, I am uh, lacking them uh, this options here. But the question was alteration can be by. I have also discussed uh, various techniques in uh, the video lecture that was that is on molecular biology. So alteration in DNA sequence can be assessed by. So guys, not the fish at least. A fish is not detecting the alteration and detect the aneuploidies, not the sequence. Definitely pyro sequence. I can use RFLP if it was in the option because just change in the one nucleus will change the site of restriction and time cuttings. Okay, restriction. Restriction of change in the codon, change in the nucleus. Yes, RFLP can be indirect answer. Microarray again because it is based on the hybridization process. Okay, so it will detect the changes. So only the probe, which is hundred percent. Suppose on the chip, uh, this green red color was the so the gene segment was there. And if I am adding a probe complementary to it, so suppose the probe will not bind if there is a change in its uh, nucleotide, right? Because that is that should be complementary. Okay, suppose this A is something which was not supposed to be here, and but it's what was supposed to be here, T was supposed to be here. So, this is having also A, right? This probe, this is green color is probe, and this is the gene chip, okay, that is also called as microarray, and this is the uh, gene segment that I want to identify. So, guys, the probe will not bind if there is a change. So, in the comparative gene analysis. Because that can also be the answer. I am not sure if these were the only options given, right? So let me know. Possible. Fine, guys. Then the next question was in the GSDs or lysosomal storage disorder. So that is Pompe's disease, right? Not all the GSDs are LSDs, but only the Pompe's is the one. That was a simple one. It's a type 2 glycogen acid maltase present in lysosomes. Okay, so this is the enzyme which is only GSD which is LSD. The only GSD which has enzyme therapy time based combinant. Okay, guys. Okay, and the last question was uh, the maximum thermogenic effect. Again, very easy and very repeated question. Guys, proteins has the maximum. What is thermogenic effect? Energy required. Right or the increase of the BM energy required for absorption, digestion. So proteins have highest amount that is almost of 20%. Fats, carbohydrates have almost 10%, 5 to 10, and this is almost 0 to 5%. Okay, so if sequence is asked, this will be the protein, carbs, and okay, guys. So now there is no time for thinking, and this is what just a a point that you can analyze that questions. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for listening.